Hello everyone. So in this video, I will talk about uh, problem 8.3, which is a problem that has uh, both the timing diagram and also the hazards. So I will do this example for the circuit as you can see here. So in this question, we have delays defined for each of the gates. So basically uh, it has been stated that the inverters have a delay of one nanosecond and the other gates have a delay of two nanoseconds. And we know that initially A is equal to zero and B is equal to C equal to D and equal to one. And it says that C changes to zero at time t equal to two nanoseconds. So we wanna draw a timing diagram and identify the transient that occurs. So what we have to do for the timing diagram, first of all, what, what, what you can do is to write the equation for G, E, and F, because we know that each of these are depending on the inputs that we have. So G is equal to E or F, and we have E equal to B and C, and F is equal to C prime, A prime D. Okay, so we have the um, definition, basically the equation for each of these variables. So we can go ahead and draw the timing diagram. So what we need to have in the timing diagram is variable C because we know that variable C is changing. So variable A, B, and D are not changing. As you can see in the problem statement, it, it um, it didn't state that um, A, B, or D are changing. Only it states that C changes to zero at time T equal to two nanoseconds. So what I'm gonna draw is the timing diagram for C, E, F, and G, which will change with respect to um, C, E, and F. So what I have are the times, so I will, divide the time into one nanosecond periods because we know that some of the gates like the inverters they have one nanosecond of delay so I may need these one nanosecond chunks at um, some time okay so here I can say that this is one two three four seven and eight and if we need more I can add later so initially, initially it says it says that C is equal to one, right? So I will write these equations for E, F, and G down here, so I can have them um, closer. So E is equal to B, C, F is equal to C prime, A prime, D, and G was equal to E or Okay, so initially C was equal to one, A was equal to zero. And uh, so if I wanna find F and E initially, so B and C are both one initially. So E is equal to one, right? Then F is C prime, A prime, D. So C prime is equal to zero. All right, so it is a zero being and by two other variables. So for sure we have zero for F initially. And G is E or F. So one or zero, we're gonna get a one, okay? So here at T equal to two nanoseconds, it says that C changes to zero. So basically before T equal to two nanoseconds, nothing is happening in the circuit. All right, so C is equal to zero after two nanoseconds. So basically E, F, and G were the same until T equal to two nanoseconds because, because no changes happened in the circuit. At T equal to two nanoseconds, when C changes to zero, what will change? Both the variable, uh, the values for E and F will change and also G will change with respect to E and F. But let's see, because for E, you can clearly see that E is the end of B and C. When C changes to zero, E will for sure change to zero, no matter what B is, okay? But at the same time, if you look at the circuit, 
E is the output to this NAND gate. And I know that my NAND gate has a delay of two nanoseconds because it says that inverters has delay of one nanosecond and other gates, which are my AND and OR gate, they have a delay of two nanoseconds. So when C, which is the input to this NAND gate here changes, okay, it will take two nanoseconds for this gate to operate and give us the change that is happening for E. Okay, so two nanoseconds after t equal to two nanoseconds, this is basically the delay of that NAND gate. So e will change to zero, and we know that c since c will remain zero, this e will remain zero. Okay, now. Another variable that will change with respect to the change in C is F. So F is equal to C prime, A prime, D, right? What is A prime? A prime is equal to one. What is D? D is also equal to one. So now when C changes to zero, C prime will be equal to one, okay? So F should change to one. But we know that F is the output of this NAND gate here, right? And we have to be careful about this inverter over here. So C, the change in C should first um, pass through this inverter. So this will give us one nanosecond of delay. And then that output, which is a C prime here, should go and pass this NAND gate here. So we have a delay of total three nanoseconds, okay? So what will happen is that at t equal to two nanoseconds, we're gonna have a delay of three nanoseconds for f to change to one, okay? So that would give us t equal to um, five nanoseconds, all right? So here, f changes to one. Now, what will happen to G? We know that G will change when its input changes, right? So e, um, G is equal to E or F, okay? E changes to zero at T equal to four, right? So if we go all the way here until T equal to four nanoseconds, we know that nothing should change um, G at this time. I mean, before t equal to four nanosecond. But at t equal to exactly four nanosecond, e changes to zero, okay? So when e changes to zero, g will change to zero as well. Why? Because see here, we have g equal to e or f. And at this time, at this period, f is equal to zero and e is equal to zero. So zero or zero will give us a zero but we have to make sure that we take into consideration the delay of this OR gate, which is two nanoseconds. So based on the change in E, so based on this change, G will change to zero after two nanoseconds, right? Until here, everything is good. But we have to also look at the changes in F. So after E changes to zero and made G change to zero at T equal to six nanoseconds, we see that here at T equal to five nanoseconds, F is changing to one, okay? It's going from zero to one. It means that at this time, G should change to one, right? Because it is E or F. But we have to take into consideration the delay of the OR gate. So at t equal to five nanoseconds, it will take two nanoseconds of delay for g to change to one. So we know that g will change to one at t equal to five nanoseconds, right? So basically, here is where this hazard is happening, okay? So this is basically a static one hazard 
which is when. It is unexpected change in the output. And since it is a change from one to zero, and it is a glitch into the one output, we're calling it, uh, calling it a static one hazard. Okay? So basically you see that because of these delays, this glitch is happening. Okay? Otherwise, these wouldn't happen. All right? So now that we've found this, part B of this question asked us to modify the circuit to eliminate the hazard. Okay? So I will um, write here that we want to modify the circuit to eliminate the hazard. So what can we do for that? We know that we have to go and um, draw the kernel map of this circuit and then find the two adjacent ones that are not looped with the same loop. So let me draw the kernel map first. So we are drawing the kernel map for function g. I mean, for um, variable g. So we have this kernel map for g. And we know that our kernel map, uh, basically g is equal to e or f, which is equal to b c or c prime, a prime d. Okay? So if I have a, b here, and c, d, we're going to have this kernel map. Okay, so I want to map BC, um, which is going to be here. So this is one of my loops. So these loops that I'm drawing right now are based on the circuit that we have. Okay, and then C prime, A prime D is going to be here. So we're going to have another loop here. So we are looking for two adjacent ones that are not being looped by the same um, loop. So they're not being, um, you know, they're not being grouped with the same loop, basically, which are this one here and this one here. OK, and how can I get rid of the hazard? So we have to loop these two adjacent ones with the same um, loop. So basically we have to put them in the same group. So if I draw this loop over here, now you can see that we do not have any other two uh, adjacent ones that are being grouped with different loops, right? So if I add this loop here to my function g, so this loop is equal to a prime b d. So if I add a prime b d, I'm eliminating my hazard. All right. So I hope um, this video was helpful to uh, learn how the hazards are working and how we can eliminate them. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments down below. And thanks for watching.